So are you ready for the letter T? Just like many of the other letters, the T has a couple unique features, a couple unique challenges that you need to overcome. Let me describe very briefly the, the essence of what we're trying to do in any typeface, in any font, any calligraphic hand that we're creating. And that is we want to make the letters look like they're all related. They all belong to the same family. So in one sense, the more similar we can make them, the better. The challenge is, of course, the letters are all different shapes. So that's why we end up, end up having to do these funny little tricks that people who don't do calligraphy won't even notice unless, of course, we do it wrong, then they won't be as attracted to our, to our hand. The letter T has a, a unique feature, and that is that great big crossbar at the top, right? None of the other letters have something like that. As you know, most of our letters, I'm going to draw my little diagram here again to show position 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And as you've probably heard me say, about 3 and a half is the, the traditional, and I think that's... a I think that's a 30 degree angle. I haven't got, actually got a protractor out to, to check it or not, but that's typical for chancy recursive. And we t begin most of our, many of our letters at about, however, to do this initial curve at about a number four angle, starting straight and then coming down like this. And in fact, that is exactly the way we start the letter T as well. But now we've got an unusual feature because instead of drawing a vertical a vertical a stem that comes this way, we want to continue that crossbar at the top. And if we keep our pencil or <laughs> our pen, our pencil pen at a number four angle, will that top bar be thick enough? And in my opinion, it's not, not, not quite thick enough. Now, how about if we hold our pen at a traditional three and a half, then I think we end up with a crossbar that maybe it's okay, but it feels a, just a little bit heavy to me. So talk about splitting hairs. <laughs> and what will be the guide, what will, be, what will tell you if you're doing it right won't be this angle. What will tell you if you're doing it right is if, if that cross beam looks like it's the right weight. And again, I would invite you to you know, look at your cheat sheet, look at the letters I've designed to see if you feel like it's right weight. So I'm going to try to hit a happy medium between the tradi traditional angle and the number four so that that top bar is just the weight that I'd like. You can't really tell from this looking at a pencil, but we'll find out when we get to the pen if we've got it right. Now, where does the, the vertical stem? Is it right exactly in the center? Uh, I think so, although if I put it in the middle, it'll look like this curve. It's a little heavy, so it's going to fall out. So I'm going to actually scunch my stem a little bit to the left, holding now in the nice, friendly whew, home position, the three and a half position, the 30 degree position, and doing a vertical stem. Of course, vertical means in line with the, with the italicized angle. And then the bottom of this now, we have a couple options. One approach is to just do a little kick out like that at the bottom of the T. And uh, many people do that, but I think if you'll let me have this liberty, from the research that I've done, the chancery cursive typefaces that appeal to me the most actually make a little bit more of a balanced T by adding a little, a little foot to the bottom that we actually don't have in any other letter, which is unusual. It's not, I don't usually like to introduce something that doesn't appear anywhere else. But I think I'm going to make an exception this time because this just seems to give the T enough of a, a weight, just a weight at the, balance, at the bottom to counterbalance that. Okay, enough talking. Let me draw one very quickly. Curve, holding the pen at just a very particular angle to get just the weight I want. And it comes to a little point there at, at the end, by the way. It's okay if it turns up just a tiny bit at the end. And then I want this vertical stem not to be quite in the middle, just a little bit to the left of center. Now I'm holding the pen at a traditional angle, straight down, and then it looks like I'm doing a typical kick out hook foot at the bottom, but instead I'm gonna add just this little foot, which gives me just enough weight to, I think, to make the T pleasant. Good enough? Let's go ahead to the lowercase T. Now, if you happen to see the letter S, 
then I already mentioned that the letter, letters S and T share this one, lowercase, share this one characteristic in common, and that is that they both extend just a little bit above the top of what is called the, the X, X height. Does that make, it's kind of an intuitive name for X height. That's how tall the X is, the top of the guideline. The T, just like the S went just a little bit above, you see that? The T does the same thing. Now, again, there's some calligraphers who will make their T's tall, like, like uh, any of their other letters, but the most traditional that I find are those who make the T just peaking, just barely peaking above that guideline. The, the, the main shaft, the main stem is vertical in line with the italics, kicking out the little foot there, making, making my pen, by the way, do you see that? Go on its hind legs, popping a little wheelie there, so it's a little thin line. And then the cross beam actually goes at the top, top guideline. So what you end up, well, let, me, let me blow this up, in a sense magnify this. What you end up with at the top of a T is a shape very much like this. Does that make sense? There's a, a large triangle, and this is the top guideline. And that's the kind of T that I like. So it's a short, squatty letter. Don't ask me why. Again, that's the, that's the most traditional approach to chance recursive. Now, what happens if we want to connect the letter T to the letter next to it? Lowercase t, quite simple. Let me draw lowercase t, finish my cross beam. This kicks out and goes easily into whatever the next letter is. Got it? That's that. What if the letter T is the last letter in a line of text? That's the last letter. Here's something a little bit different, and I think this is pretty universal. Yes, you could you could extend the foot out. That's one approach. But because we've got this crossbar, it's just, it's like a convenience. It's just too easy to, to say, well, let's make something really special of that. And that's, I think, how most T's should be finished is by elaborating on the crossbar, not the bottom, just for what it's worth. Let me do just a few letters with a felt tip pen. Again, holding, I'm at about a number four angle, just like I am for all the other letters at the top, making this curve. But then I, I'm changing it slightly. I'm going close to the to the three and a half position, and I have to I, I I have to pick up the curve in the middle so that I don't make a a bump right in the middle of the curve and come out that way. The vertical stem, and then that unusual foot at the bottom of the T. Got it? Now, see, as I look at that, can, do you see the same thing? I feel like the weight of that crossbar is just a little bit too light. So it's really, you have to be like a good cook, like a good chef. Do it to taste. Use your own eyes. Use, don't, it's not so much a matter of mathematics. This is an art form. Let me do it again. And my eyes say to me, nah, that was just a little too thin. So I'm going to increase the angle of my pen. There we go. And then the foot like that. Do you see the difference between those two T's? Too skinny? There. I like that one. Lowercase. I'm going to do the vertical shaft first. And then come back and do the cross beam. Do you see how I did that? Vertical. Holding at a traditional angle. Three and a half angle. And then the cross beam. I start by making that line and then going that way. Does that make sense? So this, this part right here does not extend any further. You don't, you don't do a line across there. It just is included in that triangle. Now let's go to the real machine, the calligraphy pen, the dip calligraphy pen, and do it very quickly so that it gets firmly cemented in your mind. You haven't ever spent so much time in your whole life on the letter T. <laughs> there, we, there we go. Make sure it's writing. There we go curve. This angle is very critical. I would say this, if when in doubt, make it too skinny because it's easy to come back and fatten it up. Be very difficult, yea, verily impossible, <laughs> to come back and make it thinner. So did you follow that? So when in doubt, you know, hold your pen at a close to the four angle because you could always come back and make it thicker. The vertical is quite simple parallel to the italicized guideline, and then this little foot at the bottom. There we go. That's an iced tea. Now let's do iced tea. 
no, nice T. Let's do a little T, lowercase T, a little kick out there. Let's pretend it's going to another letter, so I'm going to extend that. And then here I draw the triangle and come straight across at the top of the guideline. Good enough? You have got the T down to a T. <laughs> you knew it was coming, didn't you? <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Hang in there. We're almost through the alphabet. Let's keep going.